Hey guys, welcome to When People Play, and today we are going to focus on how to make fidget beads or bagleri beads using the plastic versions just like this. So, let's get started. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got a few things that I wanted you to see. Uh, typically, I have a simple board it's a scrap piece of wood this wood itself oh you're looking at 18 inches but you don't even need that big just because my string comes is that i've been making for my fidget beads is about nine inches as you can see here um but just a simple scrap board why because i use a uh, rope cutter uh, to cut my stuff you don't have to you can use scissors um, you can use a knife uh, to cut uh, cut your stuff and then just simply take a um, a lighter and light the ends of the strings. It's pretty easy. Um, there are different things I use. You notice that there is a office supply clip that you would use for envelopes, putting big things together, pieces of paper. And on the arm of the clip here, I took a washer, a simple tap screw, and I put the washer down and, and tapped it into the wood itself just to hold the clip in place. And it does really well. So it's a simple, um, simple device when you're building your beads, your fidget beads here, um, which is really cool. Um, you will notice that I have three sets of um, sizes here. On my sizes, I have a big 550, I have a 325, I have a 95. Um, they're all different sizes. I'll get into that a little bit later when building the beads. Uh, a couple of things I do first. If you're looking into using the 3D printed file, uh, there are two sizes that I'm going to provide. One is a smaller hole and the other is a bigger hole that you can actually see here. Uh, this is actually for the 95. This is actually for the, uh, the 550, um, just to kind of get things together. So you'll see the differences here just in a minute as we put these together. Um, when it comes to burning your beads, if you're using this, make sure you have a ventilated area. It does, especially if you're doing it over and over again, it does get kind of simple. I'm doing it here in my uh, I have a special room that I use, uh, so so I do apologize about the lighting and the sound, but this is where I do my work in regards to that. Uh, so a couple of things. I'm just going to take the 95. I'm just going to use it for right now. I'm going to pull that out. Look for a simple string on that end. And what's really awesome about these office clips is that it doesn't move. You can take it and pinch it right there at the end. And when you take this, just let it heat up. It takes a little bit, but basically you can pull the string. Don't pull it too tight, but just enough to get the wrinkle out. If you see it wrinkle, just pull it, but it's not so tight that you're pulling the skirt of the string itself. And then basically once it heats up, you can cut it, you're done. And it's real quick, it's real easy. And so when you're doing a bunch of these, you just make them if you're looking for 40, 50 to make, then it's just really nice to just cut a bunch of these. So again, this is about nine inches long. I believe that is correct. From that moment to there, it's about nine inches long. So I just want to look into that. Now, also when you're doing, so once you get the strings done, if you're doing the smaller bead, um, it's really nice. I don't know if you can actually see, um, but there is a inside when the 3D printer's going, there's some trash that's in there. Uh, I don't know if you can actually see that trash. You see a little line that goes through the hole there. Um, so what I would like to do is just, I just line a bunch of them up. I use the same board just to kind of help me out. Take a drill bit, use the bit that's the same size as the hole. Uh, the workspace was not built for the camera, but basically I'm just going to just really quick 
just knock the burrs out. It's really easy. And then when, if you see that you still got some in there, you just take it and do it again. Uh, but then you can see that now I got more of a clear hole and I don't have to worry about that. So once you get all your beads done, again, if you print 40 or 50 at a time, uh, I think I think the file is going to do 40. Um, so that gives you 40 of these, which leaves you with 20 Bugleri or fidget beads. That means if you only make 20, you only need to cut 20 of the strings. So moving forward, now I want to introduce to you the nuts that fit inside your 3D print. Uh, it is a 516 inch hex nut. Uh, these are the zinc ones, they're cheaper. Uh, but why do I put hex nuts in here? Well, it's simple to just keep, it's to add weight. Without it, it's really light, but when you add it, and you can see them on the inside, it adds more weight, which when you're actually doing a true fidget bead and you're doing the, uh, just the different tricks and yo-yos that go back and forth that you're just spinning them with, you know, adds weight, makes it easier. Uh, even for the games, it's really nice too, so find out that I do like the weighted ones, but you don't have to, you can play without them. Um, so I also take a bolt that I can put a 5 16 on. And the reason why I do that is that if I try to put it in myself, I can get them in there. Sometimes the heat of the plastic does not, they're either contract tighter or they don't contract at all. So this one apparently didn't contract at all. Um, so it's really easy to put the nut in. But if you're having trouble getting it in there, you're just struggling. What's great about the bolt is that you take the bolt, whoop, you put it on, and then you go back to your bead. And it helps you square up easily, and it just slides in there, and you just put it on. So the harder ones, here, let me put you on. This is one that is for a bigger string. This is for the 550, if you like a thicker string versus the 95. Um, these actually, contra uh, uh, they cooled and they became just a little smaller. So the hole just, just a little bit. And so it's harder to put these in here. So this is what's really great about using the bolts. Put the bolt on there, take it, you line it up, and just using a little force. This one just really is tight. So this batch got tighter. Let's a look at that. But it's in there. The great thing about it being tighter is that when you sling the beads and you're doing this, you don't have to worry about the nuts coming out <laughs> um, if they're really loose and they just come in and out um, you notice that they sling out so actually I do like the tighter fit better um, but again you can kind of I don't know if you can see the trash the little string that's in there even though the drill bit is smaller you just roll it around and be able to pull some of that trash out so it's really nice now, so those are the differences. And so when you're putting the string in, I like to do the nuts first and then thread the strings. Pull it through. And I just like to make a simple square knot. Just pull it back on itself. Now, you see that portion is the end of it is very long. I like to make sure that I run the knot as close to the end as possible without this portion, without this portion slipping over the end. So I got it pretty close. And then you just zip, and it slips right in there. So that's really cool. 
Now, the difference between that one and a 550, the 550s are really thicker. I'll show you the difference. But the 550s are really thicker. You can see the difference between the two. But when you're using a 550 hole, yes, it slides in there and pulls out pretty quickly. Let me go ahead and put two of these in here for you. Well, once again, I gotta use the bolt, so I'll square that up. And snap it in there. There you go. So you got this going on for you. Now, because the string is thicker, when you do your square knot, you do want to make it go to the very end as possible. And you will notice that the difference, because it is so thick, that it stops right there at the end versus this one, which was able to slip, slip down very easy from the last one. The only thing I do, believe it or not, it, because the skirt does have some air in it, you can turn it in such a way to fit inside of there Give it a good tight pull. Whoops. When you give it a good tight pull, it slides in there and it's nice and fit. So again, you've done your beads. So I just made another one. Same hole for the uh, 550 string. Again, I can just take the end of it, slide it in, pull it through. It's really nice. Gives you that little string knot there. Again, you don't want too much of a tail on the end, so just work it with your fingers to pull towards the end. There you go. So again, you will notice that it stops, but if you put it more where the tail is vertically going up, give a good pull and it slides right in, okay? You might notice that it might wanna to try to come out the hole on the other end, but um, it's actually staying pretty tight. And even with slinging your beads, they don't come out, they stay pretty fixed. Um, so I like it. Hey guys, thanks for visiting When People Play. We really hope that you enjoy learning how to build the fidget beads using the 3D version. If you want to learn how to do more activities just like this using these uh, uh, great small props then visit the link down below in the description it will take you to more free tools and resources one of which is an excerpt from our sling it forward team building book using fidget beads also uh, click like and subscribe to this it really helps us out spread the word but also if you want additional other free resources that same link will help you use uh, other small props like Red Solo Cups, or Wordles, or Rebus Puzzles in, in connection, or even going to our website at whenpeopleplay.com, there's a lot of free activities that you can use small props for in connecting and building teams. So again, we thank you for visiting When People Play, and if you want to uh, see how to build brass beads just like this, then click on this video or subscribe here. Again, thanks for visiting, and we hope that you have a playful day.